Praise the Lord, everyone. Today we're going to talk about this book called The Book of Mormon, used by those in the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. That's what they call themselves. This Book of Mormon is what they call another testament of Jesus Christ. So we're going to take a look at this book, how it came about, who was the person who brought it out into the open, devised it, published it, talk a little bit about this group, the Mormons. Like people of many different faiths, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints believe that God exists, that He is the literal Father of the spirits of all mankind, and that He loves us. Our understanding of God is informed by scriptural evidence found in the Holy Bible, the Book of Mormon, and the teachings and testimonies of God's prophets in our day and age. Now, you see what they said, that their understanding of things is brought about by the Bible and the Book of Mormon. So we see something there. We see a red flag. The Bible says not to add to the Word of God, but they have what they call another testament. Let's see how this Book of Mormon came about. According to Joseph Smith, he was 17 years of age when an angel of God named Moroni appeared to him and said that a collection of ancient writings was buried in a nearby hill in present-day Wayne County, New York, engraved on the golden plates by ancient prophets. Smith stated that this vision occurred on the evening of September 21, 1823, and that on the following day via divine guidance, he located the burial location of the plates on this hill. He was instructed by Moroni to meet him at the same hill. On September 22nd of the following year to receive further instructions and that in four years from this date the time would arrive for bringing them forth i.e. translating them. Smith's description of these events recounts that he was allowed to take the plates on September 22nd 1827 exactly four years from that date and was directed to translate them into English. That is how this book the Book of Mormon came about because he claims that he received some sort of vision by as what he calls an angel of God named Moroni but we do not see any reference to an angel of God named Moroni nor do we see anywhere in the Bible where it says for us to write additional testaments of Jesus Christ given to us by angels so that is another red flag Modern-day prophets of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have taught that all human beings, male and female, are created in the image of God. Each is a beloved spirit, son or daughter, of heavenly parents, and, as such, each has a divine nature and destiny. I do not see anywhere in my Bible, the Holy Bible, King James Version, uh, where it speaks about heavenly parents. We do not see anywhere in scriptures where there is some sort of heavenly mother but according to the Book of Mormon that's what they believe let's see what the Word of God says but to us there is but one God the Father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him and we by him 1 Corinthians 8 6 do not see anywhere there that there is a heavenly mother or two people bringing about spiritual sons and daughters. But that's according to the Book of Mormon. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Jesus Christ is speaking here understanding that he is the beginning of the creation of God. So God brought everything into existence. God created all things. But we do not see the assistance of another deity, a heavenly mother, a spiritual mother. We do not see that there was a, a combined unity of beings bringing about all men and women. No, but according to the Book of Mormon, another testament, that's what they say. Notice the interaction between someone and 
the Church of Jesus Christ associate. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches that all human beings, male and female, are beloved spiritual spirit children of Heavenly Parents, a Heavenly Father and a Heavenly Mother. Although our present knowledge about our Heavenly Mother is limited, servants of God have affirmed her existence and taught that she works together with the Father for our salvation. You can learn more about what we believe on this topic here. And he gives the name of his website or their website. Now this is what they perceive uh, to be spiritual parents a heavenly father and a heavenly mother and all those little dots below them are spiritual sons and daughters everyone who comes into existence comes from this supposed deity the heavenly mother and that's according to the book of mormon god has a body of flesh and bone he has a voice that can be heard ears that can hear us and a perfected body that will never decay or die he has all knowledge and all power and his goal is to help us find happiness in this life and after this life live with him forever did you hear that it was very subtle but it was stated very clearly at the beginning of his statement let's go in and listen closely to what he said god has a body of flesh and bone god has a body of flesh and bone God has a body of flesh and bone. Now right there, another red flag rose up. According to the word of God, we see the contrary of God having a body of flesh and bone. Let's refer to the Holy Scriptures. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. So we see that this spirit, this God, this Holy Spirit, does not have a body of flesh and bones. And this was even affirmed or confirmed, stated by the Son of God. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. So Jesus Christ himself said that a spirit does not have flesh and bones. And God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we see that this additional testament of the scriptures has perverted the word of God and has added to the word of God. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is stating that no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, and this means proximity. This is not a geographical location. This is a closeness of relationship. Jesus had a close relationship with the Father. And he declared him while he was on the earth. Another separate and distinct being, who, unlike the Father and Son, does not have a body of flesh and bone, but is a personage of spirit who conveys God's love and direction to us through gentle impressions in our heart and mind. Now we see hints of the Babylonian triune or triunity of deities. They believe that God is divided into three beings or three distinct deities, similar to those in the Roman Catholic Church. So we see that the Mormons mix the truth of the Word of God with ancient Babylonian paganism. And that's where this whole concept of a trinity uh, multiplicity of deities, triple gods, derived from ancient Babylon. As we stated before in another teaching, this was done in defiance to worshiping the one true God. So they worship gods, small g, goddesses, fertility gods, sun gods, moon gods, queens of heaven, as they say, uh, gods of fertility the all-seeing eye god Ra they worship nature they worship stones they worship carved images and we see these images of three beings three deities three gods the Babylonian Trinity where the modern-day Trinity was developed came from Catholicism formalized the Trinity in the late 2nd century AD 
and you can read the encyclopedia it's historical fact that the Roman Catholics changed the formula of baptism from in the name of Jesus to in titles Father, Son, Holy Spirit taking out the name of Jesus Christ taking out the blood taking out the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ taking out the remission of sins a person who is baptized in titles is not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ only the name of Jesus Christ can save an individual a title has no power in itself but the name of our Lord Jesus Christ has all the power in heaven and on earth that is the only name that will remit sins the LDS needs to repent and obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late on the road that they are on at this moment if they were to die in that state they will not be ushered into heaven but they will be greeted with hell fire they will be in shame and utter dismay because they have not obeyed the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ after one believes the gospel they obey it and Acts 2.38 is how one obeys the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ they repent they are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and they shall receive the Holy Ghost and this promise is to all as many as the Lord our God shall call friend if you're in the LDS movement repent to God ask him for forgiveness forsake your Mormonism and become born again be born of the water and the spirit before it's too late before you find yourself in utter damnation